Hello everyone, my name is Josh Hall and I'll be talking through my residency project um, here in Western Australia um, and how you can make use of it. Uh, so I've been spending the last few months working with the Advanced Visualization Lab at UWA and the Center for Rock Art Research and Management. Uh, and what I've been doing is having a look at how to take 3D models um, of real-world environments which have been reconstructed using a process called structure for motion. Um, how to take these 3D models which tend to be very big cumbersome models um, and process them in a way using techniques from um, computer game level design uh, to be able to share them, uh, make them very lightweight and um, not very processor intensive so that you can put them on uh, on the iPad and share them with people um, very easily. So I've made a app that I will be putting onto the App Store and also for the Android tablet devices and web player um, and Mac and PC versions of it as well. Um, this thing that I am not incredibly imaginatively called Site Viewer. Um, and what this will do will allow you to download arbitrary um, model site models. Um, I'll give you a demo in a minute of what it does. Um, and this set of tutorials is basically going through the process of going from a, a photo scan model, uh, this particular piece of software, photo scan, um, and cutting it up into pieces and projection mapping, like a, a texture mapping uh, on, onto the model so that it's not quite as large but it still looks um, as detailed. And then finally how to export that, put it into Unity 3D and export that and upload it online so that you can load it up um, using this bit of software. So it sounds like a fairly involved process but it's, um, it, it's not super scary and hopefully these tutorials will just uh, make it very straightforward. It takes a little bit of time but the outcome should be very rewarding um, considering that these models uh, generally require very powerful machines to visualize. Um, so the ability to run it on, on an iPad is just, um, and also share it with people sort of anywhere in the world basically, um, is quite good. Uh, so let's have a look at what it does. Um, this is sort of the iPad sort of size view. Uh, when it starts up, the first thing it asks you for is to select a quality level. I uh, give it a go, probably best to start on the fastest, the lowest quality, and then if that runs fine, then ramp it up. Ideally, you will be running it in fantastic, um, and, and then you'll get the best results out of it. But depending on the hardware that you're using, you might want to start off in the fastest mode. So once you've selected that, um, just touch anywhere else on the screen um, and you'll come to this not amazingly brilliant user interface, um, but it does the job. Uh, I'm just going to delete this folder that we've just downloaded uh, to show you how it works. So down the bottom we have a little um, text entry point and I am going to just take the web address of some online content that I've uploaded. And uh, later on in the tutorial, at the last stage of the tutorial, this set of, of videos, um, I'll tell you how to get to that final stage of exporting your model data and putting it online. So we have this uh, web address. I've just put it um, somewhere that I have access to. And then we hit Add. And what it does is connect to the internet uh, and download an index of all of the files and then start to download those, those model files. Um, the idea is that the first time that you run the program with a new site, it will download all of the content, um, and then the next time that you use it, you won't need an internet connection. It'll all be there cached on your, on your device, and you can look at it um, whenever you want. So I'm just going to cancel in the midst of downloading to show you that... Um, it's, it doesn't get too upset about that sort of thing. What will happen is if we go back into it, so say your internet connection is not very good or whatever, um, if we go back into the model now, 
It doesn't have to re-download those sections that it's already downloaded, so those load much, much faster. And then it just gets to the point where it needs to, um, to um, fill in the gaps and download the rest of the content, and it'll just do that um, to finish up. And then, as I say, once you've finished um, downloading everything, you can be anywhere. You can be um, very remote without an internet connection at all and still be able to view the content. And actually, it loads a bit faster, obviously, when it doesn't have to download things. The iPad app takes a little bit longer to load the model information, even when it's downloaded it, because the process does take a little bit of resources. Um, but it's, it's relatively fast. So here's our model um, within the app. I'm using, at the moment, the um, PC version, so I'm using the WSAD keys and the mouse to look around and move around. Uh, and you can click to sort of zoom into sections. On the iPad version, there's a little joystick sort of control in the bottom left-hand side. And um, you can use your finger to pinch zoom, to zoom in, and to look around. I might experiment with using the accelerometer so that you sort of physically look around with the device, um, but not at the moment. It might be a while until I do that. All right, so that's what the app is. Let's have a look at um, how you start to, um, to take your 3D models and put them into a format that you can load up with this app. So the things that you will need, there's four programs that you'll need to download. Um, the main one is Photoscan because you'll be taking models that have been made using Photoscan. Um, it's not free and this is definitely the most expensive part of the, um, of the process. You can get an educational license um, which I think is about $150. It's a very powerful tool and maybe um, you can run a 30-day trial if you want to have a go of it and um, uh, and see what the, the results are. Just have a bit of an experiment and see if it's right for you. It's very powerful, especially for rock art. And um, also, uh, I've done projects with graffiti as well. There are certain subject matters that work really, really well with it. And some things don't work quite so well. But definitely for rock art, it's very powerful. So if you just uh, Google search for Photoscan or just go to www.agisoft.com, uh, then you can either buy it or download a trial and do what you do what you need. Um, this tutorial set actually uses the pro version um, because the pro version is the only version that will run scripts, Python scripts. But I will go over in the later video what to do if you're using the non-pro version. Uh, it just means that you've got a little bit more work to do. So um, the next program that you'll need is 3ds Max. So this is free for educational license. Um, and if you just Google search 3ds Max uh, educational download, then it should take you to this page where you can sign up using a university email account. So if you're a student or a lecturer, you should be able to get it for free. Uh, the third bit of software is this um, tool for making computer games, basically. It's this tool for uh, making, baking uh, texture maps. So what we'll be doing later on is taking very high geometry models and then baking the, um, the detail of that surface onto a bump map and a normal map to produce the same sort of perceptual outcome but with a much, much lower geometry model. So this is a pretty much the crux of how we get our high geometry models to, um, to run on the iPad. It's pretty much taking uh, techniques that are used um, uh, all the time for, for every single um, 3D rendered computer game. There's a lot of optimization and a lot of thought gone into how you take very complex models and um, make them run a lot faster. So that's what we're going to be doing. This tool is completely free. If you search for xnormal or just go to this web address, www.xnormal.net, um, then you can download it. Uh, so download and install that. The fourth one is Unity 3D. So this is what we're going to use to um, uh, 
it's it's not a major part actually in this process um, on the export side um, but who kn I might put some extra tools and bits and pieces in there later on we're going to use that to package up our models so that they will run on um, the app which is written in Unity 3D. So this is free as well. You don't need the pro version, you don't need the paid version. Um, I'm using Unity 5 so if you um, search for it and just go for the personal edition then you should be able to run it. So none of these, you don't need any of these other um, elements. Uh, in order to go through this workflow. So you can just hit free download and install that. The final thing that you'll need is um, the Site Viewer Unity 3D project, um, which also comes with some external scripts for um, Photoscan and 3ds Max. Um, let's talk about the setup for this set of tutorials. So once you've downloaded and installed Photoscan, 3ds Max, XNormal, and Unity 3D, just um, you can come to this web address. This is a version control um, project, so if I make any changes, this website will be updated immediately, so you'll have the latest version of it. Um, and just hit Download Zip, uh, and it will download the um, project file. One thing that you do need to do, pretty much everything is um, will work right out of the box, but once you've installed XNormal, you do need to point um, one of the scripts, you need to modify something slightly to point it to the location of XNormal. So I'm just going to open up, this is, if you open up your zip file um, and then just um, unarchive it, so decompress the zip file, then you'll end up with this folder. This is the Unity 3D project um, folder. Don't be intimidated by all of these files, they're just um, uh, they're just settings and bits and pieces, you don't need to worry about it. Um, go to Assets. Uh, once you have Unity 3D you can just point, you can start up this project just by pointing Unity 3D at this folder. But I'm just going to show you this this um, script that needs to be set up. So assets, external scripts, 3ds Max, export tools, and this file here. If we um, so if I search for xnormal um, and I just I will open the file location for this. All right. So what you're going to want to do is find the shortcut to xnormal. Um, and cut this um, this folder location. So this is where XNormal has been installed on your computer. Ba -ba 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 -bum. And just take everything apart from the xnormal.exe and the um, the bracket. I'll just cut. Um, I'll copy that. All right. Now if we open up 3ds Max, uh, and we go to Max Script, Max Script Editor. I've already opened it up, but I'll just show you what it looks like when you um, to find it. Let's see. So, um, okay. So I've pulled this thing onto the desktop. If I go to s to the desktop and Site Viewer, Master, Assets, External Scripts, 3ds Max export tools and there's the script so if I open it you don't need to worry about anything other than the little folder directory um, so I'm actually gonna find it and tell you what to search for um, I'll just search for let's see okay so you can find uh, if you search for app path so app uh, da, da, da. <laughs> or actually local space app path is probably the easiest thing to search for then um, there's a directory here that's already set up um, just I'll do it again 
Search for xnormal. Here's the shortcut. Um, I'll just take the folder location, copy it, and then paste it in here. And then um, just be sure to add, these need to be uh, double, um, double backslashes for the location of your, of your folder. You just need to add backslashes in there. Okay, so we're all set up. Um, save the folder just with the same name. Um, yes. Uh, and let's go into the next video where we'll actually have a look at um, the process. Uh, I will be running through this, probably running through this model here, um, which I've reconstructed earlier. I've already made it. It took quite a while to reconstruct um, from these positions, camera positions here. And we're going to cut it up and run through the process of getting it onto the iPad. So that should be exciting.